Hey, this is Matt Titel with an audio helm for Unity tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll go over the sequencer. We'll go over how to generate some musical sequences, how to generate some drum beats and how to sync those up together, and how to generate some uh, musical, se musical sequences from scripts so we can create generative music or algorithmic music. Uh, let's get started. So I have audio helm imported into a new project here and a new scene loaded up here. Uh, if you've watched the synth tutorial, we'll be first creating an audio mixer, and that's where the native synth is going to run, and that's what we'll be sequencing. So we go to our project, create, uh, right-click, create, audio mixer. We'll call this My Mixer. Okay, double-click on it, and we'll click on the master audio group here, audio mixer group. Go over to the attenuation and the inspector, and the wheel here, and the, or the gear here, add effect before, and we'll select Helm from here. Okay, our native synth is set up. Now we need to set up the sequencer. So in our project, in our hierarchy here, we're going to right-click, create empty, rename that to sequencer, and add a component to it. We'll be calling it, it's called Helm Sequencer. There we go. It adds an audio source to our object. And the thing we need to do is hook that into our audio mixer group where the native synth is running. And that is under My Mixer Master. Okay, now we can scroll down and we can see the Helm sequencer here set up. If we click play, we can, type, we can play these notes on the left and we can type in a sequence. Uh, okay, so let's type in a sequence outside of play mode so it uh, continues. So I'm just going to type in a little sequence here. Give me a sec. Something like that. Let's play the octaves. All right, now let's listen. Okay, I like that sequence. We're going to go to our audio mixer group, master, and we're going to go to edit in play mode. And we're just going to pick a patch from here. Let's go to bass. And I kind of like these one, these UG ones down here. Let's do the show me the M1. I like that. Okay. Now, thing, uh, just a note, things that are changed in the audio mixer uh, persist after you stop. So when you click play again, it's still that same sound. So let's go over how to use the sequencer. If I click once, it creates a note. If I click again, it deletes the note. If I click and drag, it creates a bunch of notes. If I click and drag again, it deletes a bunch of notes. Um, if I cl uh, click on the right side and drag, it resizes the note. If I drag a lot, it, it'll snap, start snapping. If I it can resize the left too. Um, down at the bottom sets the velocity, so if I which is like kind of how hard you hit this the uh, sequencer. If I make it really soft or really low down here, that note that will play like you hit the keyboard really quick, uh, softly. Some patches respond to that, others don't, so it depends on the patch. Okay, uh, if we look below the sequencer, we can see there's a clear sequencer button. We'll leave that alone. Um, there's a channel button. That needs to map to the native synth channel. And there's a length which just says how long the sequence is. We'll keep it at 16. And a division. So the division will allow us to create different sized notes uh, easily. So we can create 30 second notes. So if we click play, it'll be like really quick. That's kind of cool. There's eighth notes to create bigger notes. And like you can do a triplet if you want to do some polyrhythms. Uh, okay, let's put it back at sixteenths. Now to change the BPM, we have to set the B the global BPM. And to do that, we need to add a new object into our scene. We're gonna go create empty. We'll call this clock. And we're going to add component to it. And it'll be called audio helm clock. And we can set the BPM here. Uh, if we do something like 120, that's kind of like a pretty standard um, BPM. If we do 140, it turns into a type of trance, like a techno. Like what you'd hear at a techno. If you go with something like 80, that's a, a, a kind of down tempo. 
Okay, so let's keep it at 120. I kind of like 130 actually. Let's do 130 and let's add a drum beat to it. There is these useful presets, or prefabs here. We can go into Audio Helm, prefabs, and just select one of these kits. Um, so I'm just going to drag this drum kit one into our sequence or into our uh, project. And we notice we have a similar piano roll with less notes. And if we scroll down, there's a sampler here. You can watch the sampler tutorial to figure out how that works, but we'll just be using this for now. Um, so there's a kick down here, snare, some other sounds. Okay, so I'm just gonna do like a four on the floor type thing. And then put a snare there, snare there. And what was it? The hi hats in between them. Something like that. Let's hear it. And it's automatically synced up. So you can create these uh, uh, sequences and sync them up automatically. And we can add some things while it's playing. Let's do some three seconds. The last thing we're going to do is generate a sequence from script. Um, so we need to create another object in our scene. Go to the hierarchy, create empty. We'll call this sequence generator. And we're going to create a new script. So we'll go over to add components. And what uh, we're going to do in this tutorial is just create an increasing pattern. So it'll, uh, every note will increase the same amount of semitones. So we'll call it increase sing sequence. Create an add and double click on it and open it up in our text editor. Okay. So the first thing we need is reference to our sequencer. So we do public audio helm dot sequencer. And we'll type in sequencer after it. We'll name it sequencer. And the other thing we want is the how much we want it, how many semitones we want to increase for every single uh, note. So we'll call that increase. And if we set that at three for default, that's the devil's staircase. We'll figure out why in a second if you're not familiar with it. Um, and the last thing we need is the starting note. So and it's a MIDI note. So zero is the lowest, 127 is the highest. Uh, so we'll set that at 20 for starting. We'll set that starting note to 20. And on start, we will generate the sequence. So the first thing we want to do is clear it. So we say sequencer.clear. And then we want to uh, figure out the length because that's how many notes we'll add. So int uh, length equals sequencer.length. And then we need a for loop to generate, uh, I spelled sequencer wrong. Um, we need a for loop to uh, add each note. So we're going to have a for loop here. I going from zero to the length, minus one, to less than length, um, plus plus i. So that'll this will run six, uh, the length number of times. And then in here, we'll add a note uh, by doing sequencer dot add note. And it takes in a few parameters, takes in the starting note, or it takes in the note that you want to play. So that'll be um, starting note plus uh, i times the r increase. So in this case, starting note's 20, i starts at zero. So we start, the first note will be 20. When i increases to one, the next note will be 23, then it'll be 26, then it'll be 29, 32, and so on comma, then the starting and the ending uh, position. And those positions are measured in 16th notes. So if we want these notes each to be 16th, uh, 16th long, uh, we can just use I for that. So since I is um, zero here, uh, to make it 1 16th long, we just do I plus 1. And then the next note will be the next 16th note. Okay, so let's try that out. Let it compile, 
And we just need to add our sequencer in there. Okay, click on our sequencer to see, watch it generate. So when we click play, there, generated a sequence. Uh, we can change that. So it's, it's called the Devil's Staircase because it goes up minor thirds and it's kind of uh, a very, it's like, it's like really unnatural. It, it wraps back on the octave. It's kind of weird. Uh, another thing we can try is going up by fourths. Cool. Uh, another thing we can try is going up set the starting note to 32. We can do uh, chromatic. Maybe a little bit higher. We'll do uh, 44. So this is a chromatic goes up one semitone, pretty much hits every key on the keyboard between that, those, the starting and end point. Okay, that's the tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching.